Today I'm going to talk about sugar, candida and microbiome. <laughs> hey, I'm Pauline and today exceptionally I have written all my notes here <laughs> because I don't want to miss a single information and I want this video to, keep, to be kept uh, relatively short. So let's go. So candida albicans uh, is normally present in intestines and in the feces. The candida albicans is a funga, it's like a, it's a yeast in the yeast category. It is non-pathogenic and it participates to the balance of our microbiome. So in healthy people, um, candida is uh, in several areas of the body and it's distributed the following way. And you don't have to remember the numbers, don't worry. <laughs> So it is in the skin, 3% of it, in the vagina, 13% of it, in the uh, anorectal tract, tractus, 15%, in the mouth, um, 18%, in the stomach and the duodenum, 36%, and in the jejunum and the ileum, 41%. Okay, so it is in many places but it should not be in the blood. That's not normal. So the candida is mostly in the, in the gut, right? If you listen well. <laughs> and that's normal, as I said. But when it proliferates, when it grows abnormally, then you, people can get uh, uh, candida excess in the mouth, in the vagina, on the skin, and that's really not nice. I don't have the scientific names for this uh, special candida in the mouth or etc. But you get my point. Um, because I'm, yes, I'm reading French here because I wrote the notes in French and I'm translating it live. Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, di diagnostics, diagnosis and solutions and causes and, and diet. So let's keep going. So there are some... Hmm, Folklorical <laughs> diagnosis like uh, kinesiology, bioresonance, and fluidity test in saliva, which are not reliable. I'm sorry. There are also tests in feces, which are not reliable either. Neither, because the candida is naturally present in the gut and in feces. So these tests mean nothing, nothing at all. So if a natural part does this kind of diagnosis to you, it's not valid. Okay, what is valid then? Well, there's a test that uh, is reliable, but invasive. So it's a gastroduodenoscopy made by a doctor in order to test proliferation of candida. So if you have an abnormal growth of candida, then that's how you can diagnose it, diagnose, ty <laughs> test it. <laughs> Ah, excuse my English. <laughs> okay, that's that's not funny if you have this um, this problem. And what are the solutions that are usually proposed? So there are some fungicides that work only temporarily. They work only as long as you take them. But as soon as you stop taking the fungicide, then the candida grows abnormally again. So that's not a solution to me. And then other solutions that is uh, proposed a lot is drastic diets that are sugar-free. And these diets don't work very well because it's a wrong approach to the problem. Okay, so what is the right approach? Yeah, there's lots of sun coming here. <laughs> okay, I'm moving here. Um, okay, I'm not talking about the approach right now, but I'm going to talk about the cause, the causes. So officially, causes are a repeated antibiotic uh, use, diabetes, some medical treatments, and immunodepression, like AIDS. Okay, I would also add a, another cause that is major, and it is the diet, a diet that's not adapted to the human being. I'm going to talk about that soon. So instead of trying to eradicate the candida, one should improve the diet 
like really seriously in order to restore the microbiome, restore the healthy microbiome. And all the approaches that were quoted before are not working well. So you probably tried them for years and didn't get good results. So before I talk about the diet, I'm going to tell you about a story. Um, oh, sorry, not a story, a study. <laughs> so this study, um, which is quoted by Dr. Michael Greger in the video that uh, is uh, in the description down below with sources. So th this study tested two groups. One group with uh, zero added refined sugar and another group with 14 spoonfuls of added refined sugar in their diets. And what was the result? Was there any difference? And there was no difference of uh, candida population in the gut of these two groups. Removing sugar doesn't do anything in that case. So what, what should one do if it's not the, the sugar? Well, first you have to understand that something like that, something like a banana or I don't know, any other fruit, once it is digested, the fructose and glucose is in the gut and it is the equivalent of sugar. You know, it's glucose and fructose. It's the same, the same molecule because um, refined sugar is saccharose, which is equal to glucose plus fructose. And what about potatoes and rice and stuff like that? Well, once you digest starches, the, the starch becomes simple sugars after digestion. So the starch becomes glucose, which is a form of sugar. So if you really wanted to quit all the sugars, you should quit all the starches, all the food and refined sugar, of course. Would that diet work? This would be a keto diet, which is so unhealthy, which has, would give so many side effects, short term and long term, it's so dangerous. So, so of course, trying to remove the sugars from the diet is a terrible approach. So what should one do? <laughs> okay, we should wonder what is the natural human diet. And for that, we should check the tables of compared anatomy. There were studies about that, so interesting. And what is the animals that look like us the most, that have the, a similar um, digestive system? Primates, you know these big monkeys, <laughs> not monkeys actually, but, uh, like uh, bonobos in particular. The bonobo species is so similar to us. You should look at pictures of them. They look almost like us. Okay, I'm not saying that we are apes. Okay, apes was the right word. I'm not saying that we are apes, but we are very similar to them. And what do they eat? What do the bonobos eat? Mostly fruit, ripe fruit, tropical fruit. So that's is our natural human diet. That's the most physiologic, physiological human food. Okay, in this world that's, uh, that doesn't like fruit and doesn't like sugar in general, it's hard to get a lot of ripe fruit, enough ripe fruit to get enough calories. And also maybe you don't like fruit, I don't know. So what could you do if, as an alternative to, to fruit, to ripe fruit? Okay, I'm sorry you don't like banana, but in that case, or if you don't want to eat only fruit, you can also eat a starch-based diet. Because starches are almost like fruit. They are high in carbohydrates. And our species is adapted to a high carbohydrate diet, a low protein, low fat, high carbohydrate diet. So fruit and starch and some sugar, that's the basis. That's the, the staple. And then, of course, we can add, uh, I don't know, uh, vegetables, cooked vegetables, some mushrooms, some uh, dark leafy greens, and a few things like that. You don't even have to be fully vegan to, to improve your candida situation. But the best way to improve it as fast as possible is to have a fruit-based, starch-based diet. And don't fear sugar. You can add sugar in your fruit. It's not a problem in a low-fat diet. And people who get diabetes, which is also a, a cause of candida, 
Well, these people eat way too much fat, and the fat plugs the insulin receptors, which causes insulin resistance, and the sugar is stuck in the blood, and it's not going to the cells, then your body doesn't work as well as it should. So the problem all along for candida is an excess fat intake. And if you minimize the fat to the very minimum, then you can get results. So I'm not a doctor, I just like to do a lot of research and I've had, uh, I've been following a high carb, low fat vegan diet for 13 years now. And that's the best diet I've ever had. I wish I started it sooner. So now I'm 39 and I wish I started this diet when I was 20, you know, or even earlier. I have so much energy on that one and that, that's the best. Huh? Okay, um, I think I covered it all. I hope you liked this video. I hope that you learned something and feel free to click the link in the description. And if you have uh, some testimony to share, then let us know. Maybe it's your story, maybe it's uh, a testimony of someone else on social media. Feel free to share all of that and stay carved up. See you soon.